by Danny Kahneman uh, in her memory. But I want to start by uh, calling our rector, Sarah Strumza, to say a few words. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Eyal. This is the second day of celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Center for the Study of Rationality. And like yesterday, today's celebration is marred with sadness. 20 years to the Center, one year without Edna. Edna Ulma Magalit was among the center's cornerstones, and she was also among the center's most powerful advocates. At least to an outside observer, her presence in the center often smoothed its blunt angles. For that matter, this is how her presence affected the Hebrew University at large. In innumerable committees, I saw Edna exercising the center's trademark of critical thinking, questioning whatever crude proposition was on our agenda, correcting it, and at the same time advancing and honing the thought around the table. Her criticism was never circumspect, but I don't recall it ever being blunt. Logical and eloquently put, it was always crystal clear, always sharp, always poised. Rationality, the topic around which the center lives, is the exercise of reason. Rationality, and here I borrow a definition used by Edna, means that decisions are made in a consistent manner to maximize benefit. This is a particular kind of reasoning, and perhaps sadly, not necessarily identical with human thinking it as such. Indeed, humans have long identified their capacity to think as, the, as their distinguishing trait. We proudly defined our kind as homo sapiens, and already Aristotle defined human being the human being as a discursive animal, zoon logikon, that is to say, an animal whose discourse reveals reasoning. But sapientia, the wisdom that defines homo sapiens, is not limited to rationality, nor does the discourse of the discursive animal invariably reveal rational thinking. Edna's rationality, however, was inextricably connected to her being human and to her humanism. The fact that she has been the director of the Center for the Study of Rationality went hand in hand with her being the chair of the Association for Civil Rights in Israel and with her sitting on the board of Betzelem, the Israeli Information Center for Human Rights in the occupied, occupied Territories. Her attraction to mathematics as a young student, the fact that her ear remained attuned to mathematical economics and statistical psychology went hand in hand with her interest in philosophy of education her translations of English and German classical poetry, and her passion for the Dead Sea Scrolls. In 2006, Edna published her Out of the Cave, a philosophical inquiry into the Dead Sea Scrolls research. What Edna did in this book was a reflexive process, the researcher examining the way research is done. This reflexivity is also what the Center for the Study of Rationality is all about, the decision makers examining the way decisions are taken. Though I won't suggest, it had occurred to me to suggest, changing the name of the center to the Center of Reflexology. At some point in the book, Edna stops to observe, to observe the battlefield that she had charted. And she says, I quote, 
Insofar as this controversy does not attest to the irrationality of some of the proponents of the various theories, it does attest to deep disagreements among them about the evidence." End of quote. There was irrationality at some points. As Edna notes, the discovery of the scrolls attracted many crackpots. But most of the polemics came from disagreements regarding the evidence, or rather, its hermeneutics. The way one construes or frames the evidence, says Edna, dictates the conviction. In other words, in human science, it is not all about rationality. Or if we go back to Aristotle's definition, Part of our definition as discursive animals or rational beings is our hermeneutical interpretative drive. Once our evidence requires interpretation, it begins to shift according to the eye of the interpreter. And equally solid scientific methods, equally sound logical reasoning produce different results which until otherwise proven are equally scientific. A research like Edna's that points this out runs the risk of succumbing to paralyzing skepticism. But Edna was not lured into this trap and it was interesting to hear her speak in another context of the plurality of scientific views. In the introduction to her first edited volume, of the Israeli Colloquium on History, Philosophy, and Sociology of Science, titled The Kaleidoscope of Science, she says, and I quote, rather than attempting to express an ideology of the unity of science, this collection, in fact, aims at presenting a kaleidoscopic, kaleidoscopic picture of the variety of views about science and within science. As an alternative metaphor, one might think of a cubist painting that attempts to represent a plurality of viewpoints of a certain object on a single planet." End of quote. This kaleidoscopic view, this cubist painting, representation of a plurality of viewpoints is what she examined in Out of the Cave. And this was in many ways her ideology, her deep belief that espoused pluralism in Israeli society. Also, her crystalline logic and graceful leadership was a boon to the Hebrew University. And I often miss her rationality as well as her voice, her human and humane voice. The Center for the Study of Rationality is also in some ways this kaleidoscope, kaleidoscope. On its 20th anniversary, I wish for it that it should remain so. Thank you. <laughs>